but live in spirit by the United States of America and tribute by it for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. <laughs> All right, so the minutes. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting? So moved. Motion. We got a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Frank, you voting on that one? I'm going to go over the I didn't hear you. I didn't see your hand move. I didn't see your, hand move. I didn't see your head nod. I'm going to go over the aisle. I'm to make sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, so let's go right into. Don't make me up like that, folks. <laughs> Sometimes when I got, but I don't want to scare you. But I got something in my hand. <laughs> All right. Let's see. PS one resolution authorizing Oswego County Sheriff's Office to accept a donation from Extreme Auto Recovery of a vehicle, 1964 pickup truck. So we got a motion. We got a second. We got a second. Any discussion? This is the truck. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice old truck. Uh, the guy bought it. Might have donated back to the sheriff's office for four eights and such. Any issues with that, Richard? No, I, it's not an issue at all. I, I think this is really uh, one of our constituents, business owners, et cetera, et cetera, <coughs> stepping forward and at least recognizing maybe what we do for the county for him. And the thing is. If he's not bashful, and some people are, and I just want to be incognito, but it'd be nice if we could invite him to one of our meetings and just give him a recognition for it, like that. It's, it's, it, to me, that would be the right thing to do. Right. Well, we can publicly thank uh, Extreme Auto Recovery for this donation. Even a letter, maybe a thank you to yeah. yeah. this. Is right. Right. Richard Mitchell would have to on if he wanted to be really notified. Or he, he might not, not want everybody in this town to know he's got your help. Maybe then just a nice letter to say yeah. how much we appreciate it. Yeah. I, mean, I went up and said, yeah, because he did it right there. That's kind of cool, though. Well, okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I heard you have that. Sorry about it. Let's go on to PS2. Resolution amending salary for the Oswego County District Attorney. All right, uh, got to get a motion. So we'll move. Second. Got a second. Got a second. Okay. Uh, as everybody knows, the state sets the salary for the District Attorney, and they've chosen to increase it. Uh, any discussion, Mr. Castillo? What's the salary? What's the salary is at right now? I think it's around two ten. Now it's two twenty. Two two. thoughts for that. So in my understanding, how much of that is covered by the state? It's uh, uh, 70, <coughs> only 70 plus. But yet they're setting the, yeah. they're setting the, you know, the bar up here, but then they don't want to move the, you know, the other bar up to cover. Yeah, that's so, the but, state. You know, that's, that's the state, state right? You know, that's that's state state we know that, you know, we've done it, you know, in the past. So I understand. Okay, good enough. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Let's go on to PS3. Resolution authorizing budget mod to transfer funds from personal examination line to other fees and services for the emergency management office. Can I get a motion? So moved. Motion. We got a second. All right, Nate, you're up, buddy. Trying to make it. Yeah. Oh. Um, so this is just taking eighteen thousand three hundred fifty dollars <laughs> of. UT course registration fees as a regular ride and changing from expense funds to pay our life instructors and course instructors. Okay. So it's just moving money now. We've already got, we got the revenue problem. Now, now so we're just going to pay them. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Let's get right into uh, department reports. Um, let me start with uh, EMS. Go ahead, Nate. <coughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, been pretty busy. Both me and T class continue wrapping up uh, next month. Seven students. Uh, the first in EMT class is ongoing. They'll wrap up in July. 14 original five pressures. Metro Academy wraps up next month. Eight original and one refresher. Um, we did submit a course request to the state for the advanced EMT class that will be hosted at NOCA in Alaska. The advanced EMT class is at um, intermediate level between paramedic and EMT. Um, it's a 150-hour course, and you have to be an EMT to take it, and then just advance you to the next step. So that would be actually the first advanced EMT 
class we will have run maybe ever. So it's been a little bit of a learning curve. Um, it's been a little bit of a guinea pig, but I think it's going to be, after talking with our agencies, I think having more of that intermediate level is becomes harder and harder to still find paramedics will be beneficial to our agency still. So, um, they've, they've asked for it, and um, they're set, uh, most of them are sending students and supporting it. So um, I think it's going to be a pretty uh, good thing for our program. That will run uh, June, finish in November. I'm um, still working with Workforce New York on, on certain classes. Um, course sponsorship renewal, our, our certificate that the state provides us that allows us to run classes is up for renewal in June. They just emailed me this morning with a checklist of paperwork we have to complete by then. So I, I have no concerns that we won't be able to renew. So we'll be able to keep our program in running for at least in three years. And then we have to re-up every three years. So pretty standard, straightforward stuff. And then again, still working with the ARPA funding um, that we were provided. Let's see, we're working through uh, getting a mutual aid agreement with all the agencies. So more to come on that soon. Um, solar clips went pretty well on the EMS side. No, nothing really uh, notable to report on that. No clips either. <laughs> um, recently, I was uh, invited to participate on a panel for uh, Friends of Recovery, uh, Stop the Stigma for Addiction Recovery, and that was really educational, really well attended by a lot of members of the community. It was over at the McCroby building, so um, really appreciating when I'm getting to speak on some different EMS stuff um, with those folks and just participated in a wide variety of other different calls and meetings and stuff. Terrific. You're representing emerging management today, aren't you? Yes, yes, I am. Go ahead. Um, so some of the planning I should point out first, um, we are still actively going through the update to the county hazard mitigation plan. We've got a few more municipalities that there was one last week, I think it's a couple more moving up in the upcoming weeks. Uh, hoping to wrap that up, that portion up soon. Um, we had a pre-eclipse training for some of the emergency operation center reps, um, and that was very well attended and went well. Uh, we did, we had the county EOC activated for the eclipse. There were about 25 different representatives from uh, 14 different organizations that were present. It was actually from about noon until about mm -hmm. six-ish. Uh, everything went very well. Uh, <coughs> thankful for the clouds. Uh, and if there was a decent amount of traffic, uh, they experienced up in the Adirondacks that I think was diverted because of the forecast. Uh, so very happy with that. Um, and then as far as some of the different meetings stuff that we've attended, uh, Public health and safety team, uh, we have represented by that team. Uh, and we attend uh, regular national service briefing, some seasonal outlooks. Uh, and there was a lot of eclipse planning that happened to pay up to the eclipse, uh, both locally and also from the state. Uh, uh, talking about the radiological pro emergency pro program um, in December of 2023, we'll put out a new uh, program manual for the radiological emergency pro program. So our staff are actively going through that and making sure that our program is going to the changes that came from the 19 to 23 changes. Um, and we do have work continue to plan for our off-year radiological exercise and happening in the uh, future. A little bit on the drone program, total flights for March were 22 in the county, and then four in the city of Fulton. There were no, other, no others reported uh, for that time frame. Uh, they're actively working on before the Corona Box program. I don't have a lot of I don't have any information on that. Uh, so I would defer any questions on that to Kathy. Um, one highlight that we did want to one thing we did want to highlight with the drone program was um, the success that it that it provided um, with the solar eclipse. There were forty seven flights during the solar eclipse from just the drone program pilots. And they were super, super helpful to live stream those into the county DOC so we could actively monitor any issues with clouds or traffic or anything like that. And there were actually a couple instances where we were able to proactively get some traffic either rerouted or mitigate some incidents before it even though it was like the number one. Uh, so those are super, super helpful. Definitely yeah, a success story coming out of the eclipse. Uh, and then just one thing on um, like Ontario is it is. Uh, 11 and 12 for the time left, so we're going to put it up that one. Well. 
I thought. Very good. Any questions for Superintendent Command? Okay. Let's move on to Dave. Probation. Um, thanks. Good morning. Um, pretty much our workload numbers are the same uh, as what they were last month. A lot of change there. We did double our restitution collection um, in March, which I'm guessing is probably partly because of the tax returns. We kind of get a big influx of restitution back taxes, so uh, that's good. We got four fifty thousand dollars sent out to victims. Um, we're continuing uh, interacting drilling group in the jail. Um, still got a couple officers of training. Uh, we have two vacancies for probation officers still. Um, we're hoping to be able to put off hiring until uh, we have a new list for getting the test. So hoping we'll have a fresh list of some good names. Um, as far as stop due to why, we had a victim impact panel um, a couple weeks ago, and we had 25 people attend, so uh, that was a good turnout number-wise. Um, I do want to mention that the uh, state has a stop due to our website if anybody wants to check it out because they just added a victim impact panel section to it, and the two panelists that speak at our panel are actually, they, their stories are on there, so it's kind of interesting to find one book that talks about their loss and you know, how it affected them. <laughs> We're helping schools with three mock DWIs coming up. I think there's one next week, a couple the week after that. Um, and also on Wednesday, um, Mothers Against Drunk Driving have a ceremony in Albany, and they're giving Bob Whitehall the Lifetime Achievement Awards. That's how we go. What is that? Uh, Mad Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Oh, right there. Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. I think it's noon to three, I think. Yeah, sure. Oh, we also I want to mention we started having a therapy doc come in, so thanks. That good for morale. They go over to 911. So they're going to pay you back with them. So let's see. Oh, good. It's not just for Not just for us. Okay. Uh, our coordinator is uh, to search and rescue is not here. Are oh, you have questions? Come on. Yeah. Just, just one, dude. Yep. What is the percent, of, give or take, or maybe you don't know this, you can find out sometimes, the percent of restitution versus the actual restitution orders? I can get that. I mean, I don't know it offhand. Okay, it's, no, it'd just be hard to, I mean, I could figure it out, but I can't really guess because so no, much. and I don't want you yeah, to guess. So much of the restitution now being converted to judgments. Um, <laughs> it used to be, we had our restitution collection used to be much higher than it is now, starting I don't know, probably two or three years ago, the state changed some things with the courts where the courts are now issuing civil judgments instead of restitution um, for whatever reason. So it's affecting our restitution collection. We're not collecting as much as we were because a lot of it's just going directly to civil judgments, and that goes through county clerks and DA's office. Do you, you have the bill to find out the reason why they changed that? I can't. Yeah, I mean, well, I'd like to know that answer yeah. because I want to make sure it isn't something to do with maybe the leniency we have and how people are not punished today for being held accountable for their actions. I'm, I'm guessing some of it probably has to do with the courts. If it goes to civil judgment, the cases don't come back to the court necessarily. You know what I mean? Like if they put them on probation and order restitution, we would file a violation and would go back to the court, and it takes up court time. I, mean, I don't know. Know any more about that as far as the well? <laughs> um, my take on that was it makes it easier. It puts it into a paper judgment. Right. I kind of talked about this with fines, and surcharges. And you get a paper judgment, they'll probably never be collected in the future, or unless somebody is it's well on the lottery. That's about the only way it's collected. So they, it's, if you're asking them, it's more lenient, probably yes. And I don't want to see the judgments going away because I have collected on a couple, and I'll tell you, more cases than not, it's some individual that had some whatever in his mind or her mind, uh, mind role is the he, um, they decided they were going to go up. They decided they were going to get involved with a, a, a good human being, and that good human being wanted to live in a house. And then they go get a mortgage, and here's a twelve thousand dollar fine. And I mean, I have begged right up to you know, can you cut me a deal like that? I don't think so. So 
So, I mean, I, 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 it's just what, all I'm looking for from both of you people is I want these people held accountable. If they do something wrong, they've got to be held accountable. Because right now the biggest problem we're having is that there's no accountability. All right, point me. Any other questions for Dave? Okay, let's just move on. John, you got anything for the sheriff's office? Uh, sheriff of the meeting, now because some of the Onondaga deputies came up uh, to thank us because we did some coverage for them uh, last week when they were at the funerals. So he's going to try to make it. Uh, we've got uh, Crichton's graduation. Their academy is graduating this Friday. Uh, I'm not sure of the number, but I think we've got about seven or eight. Where is, that, what time? That. Where is that happening? What time? It is in Fulton at the Alliance Church, I believe, at 1 o'clock. We have the Road Patrol Academy started beginning of the month. <laughs> How many well, we got there? How many of that guy? Five. And then five for the sheriff. How many other guys? Uh, I think we're down to four or five from other agencies with us. Guys. We started with 12. A couple okay. left the first few days, which kind of happens. Anything else? Uh, How's the medical uh, contract working out? Everything going well with that? Uh, that's a long story, but uh, we're working at it still. They still don't have all their positions filled, but because we did the emergency uh, one year contract with them, we're going, we're met with purchasing and we are preparing the RFP to go out to see if Wells Path or if anybody else bids on that or where we're going to be at with it in September, September 1 when their contract ends. So. Anything else? Okay, anything? Good. All right, Mr. District Attorney, what do you got for us today? Uh, good, good morning. Uh, just a couple updates. Uh, first of all, over the weekend, you may have heard that we had a homicide in the city of Oswego, and I just want to, uh, although it's a continuing investigation, can't make many comments about it, but I want to give a uh, a uh, complete thank you out there for a collaborative effort for investigating units from the Oswego City Police Department, Fulton City Police Department, the New York State Troopers, as well as the Oswego County Sheriff's Department. It's been a full collaborative effort, and we we have a live done 24 7 since Friday, early morning hours of Friday. Um, hopefully, we'll, you'll see more about that in the near future. Um, we have uh, two two law clerks starting this May um, from law school. Um, we have two uh, two undergrads starting in May as well that are not paid. Um, so um, I'm trying the effort of uh, uh, recruiting early on here before they become lawyers uh, to see if we can uh, make it a, a beneficial beneficial become a prosecutor. Trying to teach them away from the beginning. Um, I would like to do that every summer. I think it's going to be kind of special to our recruiting system of getting assistant district attorneys. Um, <clears throat> we still have some some uh, issues with. We have a lot of backlogs still in cases. We're still working with backlog. Um, as you know, cases are coming feverishly as we speak. Um, and working on that. Um, uh, I can tell you in the two terms that we've had uh, for grand jury since I started, so we've had a January term and a March term. We presented uh, close to 48 cases. We have two more tomorrow. The, the term will end tomorrow. Um, we are having some issues um, in regards to the way we, we, in, we actually send out independent contracts for grand jury transcriptionists. And it's my opinion that we're going to need a full-time person for that position. Given discovery laws that are, are, are created by the state of New York and the fact that we're only getting, um, of the 48 that we presented, we only have approximately seven transcripts back. Um, so we're, we're far behind on that, and uh, that's where we're going to need to take action eventually, uh, sooner than later. Um, that being said, we're working through the process. Um, and uh, hopefully with our law clerks, we'll be able to continue to work through that process as well. And I believe we're hiring a new ADA um, fairly soon within the next couple of weeks. We had somebody interview for the position, and uh, he's accepted the position. That's my
Well, the state must think you're doing a good job because they just gave you a picture. <laughs> I, just, I heard about that. <laughs> Any questions for the district attorney? Not no. for the district attorney. In general? Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Any new business? Go ahead, Frank. Yeah, about, about five years ago, I think it was five years ago, we had an uh, active uh, tra uh, shooter incidences. We, we went around to different schools and did did the uh, show and everything, and it was... Yeah, but it was 2019 we did that. Was that, was that, that, when that was? Okay. Yeah. The reason I bring that up right now is with, with all that's happening around, but the big issue is, uh, this is two weeks ago in the city of Fulton, we lost our power schools. And not until then did you find out that your emergency lighting, only half of them worked. <coughs> And I just think it's something that we have to keep, even though they've done their trainings, uh, you know, all the times and everything, it's still, I, I think there would be something that would help the school districts and help people. We're, we're, it's getting put in the back of our minds that it's not going to happen around here. It's never going to happen to us. And we have to be brought out to the light to see this is what, you know, the training, this is what we're trained for, this is how we react. Yeah, I just think it would be a good idea to bring it up to your, you know, the big committee that you've got there, or and start it here, something, something, because I just in fear of something, you know, even something as light as just power going out in school, and all of a sudden that's when you find out you don't know what to do because you, you only got half your half your lights, your emergency lighting works. I don't know how you make the leap from a power outage to active shooter training. Well, but it's why because it was the reaction to what happened. Okay. Mr. Chairman, it's the reaction to what happened. The school district did, you know, they had no way of dealing with it other than, okay, we got emergency lighting, but we don't. And now all of a sudden they're going around changing all the all the lighting because they found out that they don't work. Well, it's the same thing with you, you, you take and you, you try and you try and try to learn something, but not until you get something firsthand where you see what you guys do, what you do, and what goes on. It's, those things were. You weren't here yet, sir. And John was there. You were in that that class, right, John? Yeah. When they had him, and it was it was something to see. We did propose doing that again. Yeah, we discussed uh, it, and then it didn't fit the grant. And the problem is the cost of all the agencies and all the overtime putting it together. Um, but it is in talks that we're trying to figure out how to. So I, think it's it's something I think it's something too. we could spend the money But in the meantime, I do think that well we can go with our SROs and ask them <coughs> to see if there is emergency lighting and to, to test it at some time with maintenance in each building. But the test the test showed that they're working. The test showed they're working, and all of a sudden, bingo. Half of them weren't working. All right, any other discussion? Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. I don't think that'd be up to county legislators to make sure the lighting in the school system work. No, then we're not talking talking about getting ready for incidents that could possibly can happen. That's what I'm talking about. Talking about the power and you know, and talking about the fact that an incident happened and half of it didn't work. And I'm talking about getting ready for possibility. So well, training's always good, Frank, and it is on the table. We have to discuss that. So, yeah, any okay. other discussions? Hearing none, can you give the appropriate motion? Second motion. Adjourned. All right, have a great day, everybody.